Hey loves, uh, what a strange place to open this particular video but uh, we're working with what we have. I'm currently at Harlingham Court and um, it's along Agwens Godek in Harlingham uh, opposite Nyaku House and I'm here to give a friend of mine a short interview. She opened a new business which deals with hearing aids uh, which gets straight from um, Turkey uh, it's not a random business, it's something she's been working on. She was um, involved in a foundation that was working on the same and uh, eventually she decided to, to go um, on her own and do this and uh, I think it's a very amazing business which uh, with my platform I love bringing awareness on things that are happening and uh, so I'm here to just uh, hear more about this and to just create awareness in my little bubble and I hope that you can share with anyone who might need uh, these services and uh, someone who will um, uh, who can actually benefit from these services so I'm going to go in and um, we're going to hear from her Jimmy on the track, so you know it's lit. Bye, Bubble Boy. Bye, Bubble Boy. Bye, Bubble Boy. So, guys, I am here with the beautiful lady who I just told you about. So, I'll let her introduce herself. And tell us why we're here. <laughs> Thanks, Moi. My name is Wanja Kitao. I'm an audiologist. I run a hearing center. I do hearing assessment, prescribe hearing aids, and also anything hearing related. Yes. Okay. Audiologist means somebody who diagnoses and helps uh, people who have deafness. Great. So um, I know you've worked in this industry for many, many years. How do the statistics look like? Uh, so currently, we have 466 million people in the world have disabling hearing loss. Oh wow, yes. that's and, a huge number. And out of that, 34 million are children, so you can imagine. Okay. And uh, WHO estimated that by 2050, mm -hmm. uh, 700 million people will have disabling hearing loss. Okay. So that's like one in every 10 people. Oh my goodness, that is a crazy number because I'm calculating and I'm saying that's almost, that would be almost a billion mm -hmm. and we're like what, eight or nine billion people in the world. So it's actually more prevalent than Very. people actually think mm -hmm. and I can also imagine that number could be higher because other countries yes. like our own yes. doesn't have actual numbers. Right. Yeah. So my goodness. It would ideally be a big number. Wow, I'm in shock. And um, could you demystify the myths around deafness? What are the things that people say causes deafness but they don't or what they believe but it's not the case? Uh, I think the main one is it's an age-related hearing problem mm -hmm. that it's only for old people. <laughs> right. And people are very scared to go and get checked or if you tell someone, I think you have a hearing problem, mm -hmm. they're like, mm -mm -mm. But I'm not old, yeah. so <laughs> it's very important for people to get their hearing checked yes. just to just make sure the way you go to your dentist for a dental checkup yes. or an eye checkup, yes. hearing is also important. Wow, yeah, it's actually quite uh, overlooked. Yes, per because se. Yeah. it affects the quality of life. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown that mm -hmm. untreated hearing loss is linked to social isolation, oh. loneliness, and depression. As it could be. Can you imagine a world without sounds, without anything? You want to hide, of course. Yeah. So, uh, what should people look out for when they suspect, or just from this video, anyone who's watching, what can they do to actually um, maybe come up with symptoms that mm -hmm. could be causing hearing loss? And sometimes hearing loss doesn't mean that complete deafness, yeah. it could be lowered hearing loss. What, what, people, what should people look out for? So the main signs would be for any patient or any person they keep asking people to repeat what they're saying. They're like, uh -huh. yeah, okay. yes, yeah. yes. So that's the main one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have trouble uh, understanding children and women. <sighs> and then when you're watching TV, mm -hmm. it's usually at a very loud volume. Uh -huh. And then you feel like other people are mumbling. Oh wow. Yes. Okay. And then, Again, yeah. people will tell you, I think you have a hearing problem. Yeah. 
Because every time they talk to you, they find you're struggling to communicate. True. Yeah. And it is a Kenyan way of making fun of that. Kuni wao ski, kuni hau na maski. Yeah, which is it's quite sad. It's sad. Yeah, because obviously it doesn't come from an informed uh, place. Mm. Uh, and uh, I'm also thinking even the, the person themselves would be using a very loud voice yes. because they can't even hear themselves. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And um, what sh- what steps should someone take once they suspect, especially in children, that um, mm-hmm. uh, there could be this child could be having hearing loss or has lost mm-hmm. their ability to hear? What are those steps? Where should they go? Because, like me, by the way, before I I came across your work, if I had any ear problem, I'm thinking I'll go to a general doctor yeah. who will maybe send me to some somewhere. But what is the first step that someone should take? So, some uh, I'd say it depends. If assuming your child has pain, discharge, or they're complaining of, like they're always touching their right. yeah, the first step would be to see an ENT specialist. Okay. Because sometimes it could be due to an infection. Yes. You just want the ENT to make sure there is no problem with their ear. Right. And then from there, mm-hmm. then they'll be referred to an audiologist. Mm-hmm. But if it's just you notice your child is not hearing, then you can come straight to an audiologist. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the audiologist would ideally be you. Mm-hmm. So what happens when someone comes now here and uh, says, hey, I'm suspecting I have hearing loss? Or my child is suspecting, or rather, by the way, and by the way, before you respond to that, uh, there are also issues of uh, kids who do not hit their talking milestone, milestone on time within that period of time. Uh, I know for a fact the first thing they check for is uh, their hearing. Mm-hmm. All right. So could you tie that with what happens here at our acoustic hearing center? So for a child who hasn't met the, or achieved their milestones. Uh, first of all, I think we need to create awareness in what to look out for right. in terms of milestones. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of at this age, your child should be able to be repeat what people are saying okay. or to be making certain yes. sounds. Yes. So if we create that awareness, then parents will be more aware right. and will be able to seek help mm-hmm. early enough. Okay. Because um, sixty percent of hearing loss can be preventable. Oh wow! Sixty yes. percent—that's yes. a huge yes. number. Okay. So when the child comes in there, uh, the parent has noticed this child is not hearing well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the parent might take them to a speech therapist. True. But the speech therapist will always, always send them send first them. Yes. for hearing test. Yes. Because that's usually most of the the biggest problem or right. why they, they, they're not able to have speech. It's because they can't but hear. But they can't hear. And you normally speak. What you, what you hear. hear. So if you don't hear, then you, you'll you not have uh, speech or your speech will be impaired. Definitely. And um, I, I, I think uh, because of time restriction, I know this topic is quite deep, yes. especially when we it comes to... We cannot exhaust it, yeah? Uh, because I, I know there's a certain uh, metric uh, thingy that you, you guys use mm-hmm. uh, to... You know, to know if a person can hear, and uh, there's a translation of what they can hear and what they can speak. But uh, I think for now we can demonstrate how you do the hearing test mm-hmm. with me. Yeah. Uh, I was going to bring Kai Kai, but he had other plans. There's always next time. Then there's always mm-hmm. next time. So in fact, what I needed to show you guys is that our caustic hearing center is quite friendly. Uh, the colors are bright, as you can see, and uh, it doesn't feel like a hospital per se. It doesn't have that hospital feel. It feels more like a consultation center, Mm -hmm. which I know was your idea to make it look like that. Yes, so our approach is patient-centered, so the Ah. patient's needs always come first. Nice. Okay, let's go. You get this testing done for me. So this ideally is the hearing testing area. So there's that machine right there, which uh, an uh, an audi- on an audiometer. Oh, hey, I'm learning new things today. And uh, what happens is that you put in this soundproof room. I'm going to keep everything open so that you can hear. You see now, Wanja is out there, and uh, it's practically soundproof. Let me close the door, and you you'll hear nothing. All the noise, other than me is gone uh if you're claustrophobic don't worry there's a window here where you can see and uh, you won't even take too long to be in here so let her prepare the machine and i can get this hearing test done so i'm going to start yeah with you right here okay so i'm supposed to sit here 
I've sanitized everything. Oh yeah, everything is sanitized. So so this is your response button. Okay. So every time you hear a sound, uh -huh. you're going to press okay. and let go. Okay. Sometimes the sound might be very low. Uh huh. Or sound like it's very far. Uh -huh. But as long as you hear the sound, just press. I just press. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to press. Sorry. It's okay. Mm. I'm glad I'm doing this, not baby Kai. <laughs> Then we need to make sure it's comfortable. Okay. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it is. So every time we hear a sound, mm -hmm. press and let go. Okay. Sometimes it might be very faint, yeah. but press. Okay. So I'm going to start at a very uh, sort of loud sound, mm -hmm. but it's going to keep reducing. Okay, okay, okay. Great. So I'm going to start with you right here. Okay. I'm ready. Test your middle ear function. Okay. To ensure your middle ear mm -hmm. is functioning okay. the way it should. Okay. That's good. Okay. Just mm -hmm. switch to this <laughs> ear. Guys, remember everything is sanitized. <laughs> yep. Okay. That deaf, mm -hmm. because it ha uh, they have a profound hearing loss. Right. Yes. Okay. So there are different degrees of hearing loss. Uh -huh. Mild, which would be about 25 to about 40. Okay. 40 to about 60 mm -hmm. would be moderate. And then about 70 to 90 mm -hmm. would be severe. I see. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not doing so badly. No, your, <laughs> your hearing is within normal range. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there is where I zoned out and yeah, things went south. <laughs> and I was about to um, I think the one thing I should stress is uh, cotton buds. Ah. That's something people don't know. Right. The ear is self-cleaning, so it cleans itself. Okay. You're not supposed to clean it, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to use your pen, mm -hmm. Q-tips or earbuds to clean it mm -hmm. because you can cause more harm. True. Good. Yeah, when you're using your Q-tip or earbud, mm -hmm. you tend to push in wax, uh -huh. and sometimes wax can accumulate, then it will be impacted. True. Then from, due to the impacted wax, mm -hmm. you can have temporary hearing loss, mm -hmm. when your hearing is reduced. True. But if you have that uh, wax removed, mm -hmm. then your hearing is sort of restored, okay. or it improves. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you suspect yes. your child or you have wax, don't mm -hmm. remove it yourself. Mm -hmm. The best thing is to an ENT specialist yes. or just an audiologist? Yes, in fact I was going to ask where do you go with that because mm -hmm. uh, we underestimate such things. Uh, same way, I think we all know an eye doctor somewhere but yes. an ear doctor or an audiologist, mm -hmm. it's almost like a non-existent mm -hmm. thing. The other thing I should stress is, is for parents, do not self-medicate uh, your kids uh -huh. because you hear Parents putting oil in the ear and they cause more harm. True. So if your child has an infection, yeah, it just take them to an ENT specialist. Okay. Yes. All right. Final remarks for uh, the people. I. What I'd like to say is people should get their hearing tested. Mm -hmm. It's important mm -hmm. because hearing loss or reduced hearing yes. uh, affects our quality of life. Of life. Yes. So we need to make sure that we are. Protecting our hearing because, as I said, sixty yes. percent of hearing mm -hmm. loss mm -hmm. is preventable. Okay. Yes. okay. And the other main problem mm -hmm. that causes hearing loss mm -hmm. is noise. Oh, noise induced hearing noise. loss. So you find people listening to very loud yes, music, yes. using headphones, yeah, they cause more harm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When it's too loud. Yeah. True. So we're trying to advocate mm -hmm. for safe listening. Okay. To ensure that you're not listening to very loud music, mm -hmm. or you're not exposing yourself to a lot of noise true. for a long time true, true, true. Yeah. because okay. that hearing loss mm. is irreversible wow yes okay i think uh that would be all for today it's been a good day it's the first time i'm doing this in my life or oh, i remember as an like a whole adult three decades old <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh i think the message is loud and clear as mm -hmm. often as you see your dentist as often as you see your eye doctor also take care of your ears in fact take care of everything mm -hmm. And uh, there's an audiologist like Wenja, and uh, she's, she has all the equipment. It's a very simple task. Come, get tested, and then move from there and avoid using cotton bags, 
those are for wiping tears like wendy williams <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. and uh, stop putting oil and things. Don't listen to people. Don't mm -hmm. listen to people, see a specialist, so that you don't do more harm than good. Anyway, uh, you'd rather do the right thing than actually leave uh, deafness or treat, right? or rather start treating deafness yes. or hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you guys, and uh, come see her. Leave all her details in the box down below. And uh, she's in Hallingham. Uh, this is Hallingham Court. Hallingham Court. Hallingham uh, Court. Safe with the market. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, room 28. All right. Bye. <laughs>